Hey everybody, it's Buffy coming to you live for this nap time series. Um, and today I'm going to bring you some yin yoga. So this is going to be a two part yin yoga um, video. And to start, I'm just going to show you my favorite resource for yin yoga. It's the Complete Guide to Yin Yoga by Bernie Clark, The Philosophy and Practice of Yin. And um, it is one of the best resources for yoga available. And it is how I learned to teach yin yoga. I never was formally trained in it. I volunteered to start teaching it um, last year. And because of that, I had to learn how to teach it. And I'm so glad I did because prior to that, I was very like, um, ugh, yin yoga. I like vinyasa. I was taking hot vinyasa classes a lot. And, you know, the way I learned to teach yoga was through um, power. Like our um, our book that we used was Baptiste Journey into Power. And I was just, you know, really into that. And um, then I jumped into yin. And let me tell you, it is now my favorite way to practice and teach. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to record my class tonight and share it with all of you. And, um, but before that, I wanted to go through a couple of, um, little highlights from this book. Um, I do recommend that you buy this book if you're wanting to teach, um, yin. She goes through every single posture that you can pretty much imagine for yin. And she tells the benefits, the contraindications, getting into the pose, alternatives and options, coming out of the pose, counter poses, the meridians and organs that are affected, the joints that are affected, recommended hold times, similar yang asanas, um, and other notes on each one. And she so shows pictures and everything. So it's really a comprehensive guide to your own personal yin practice or to bringing it to others. So I really highly recommend this book. Um, so how we practice yin is a lot more important than what we're actually doing. So the intention that you're coming into it rather than from a place of force, um, more of a place of love and acceptance is going to do a lot for you. Um, so when should you practice yin yoga? When your muscles are cool so you don't steal away any stress from those deeper tissues. Um, you don't want to injure yourself. You could practice yin early in the morning when you're still kind of creaky later in the evening before bed to help you calm down your mind and your body. Um, in the spring or summer to balance out that natural kind of yang time of year when life becomes very hectic to help balance those yang energies in your life after a long trip. If you've been seated a long time, I know yin feels great after like a road trip, or for women during your menstrual cycle to conserve your energy because we tend to have low energy during that time, that season of the month. She has some recommendations before you practice. If you're pregnant or have some health concerns, you know, address those. Um, be sure to discuss it with your healthcare provider. It, she recommends not to wear perfume or cologne because you're focusing a lot on deep breathing and inhaling those fumes is not great. I do love essential oils and those kind of help to set the mood of my practice. She says not to eat anything at least two hours before practicing yin. Um, she even says it's nice to have a shower before you practice and empty your bowels and bladder and just be like cleansed and ready to really dive in before any yoga practice. But, um, if you're already physically exhausted, keep it brief and gentle. Avoid practice if you've had a lot of sun. Prolonged sunbathing depletes your body. Let it recover. She recommends to release, to remove any kind of watches or jewelry, um, glasses, and to wear loose and comfortable clothing so your body's not restricted at all. Um, it's really nice to wear PJs and do yet. You're not really going to generate any heat because you're not moving quickly. So if you need to layer up, um, make sure you have all your props. So for yin, you use all the props, the cushions, the bolsters, straps, um, your mat, blankets, blocks. Um, remove any obvious distractions like your phone or your cat. You know, find some quiet time just like with any yoga and avoid drafts or cold air. 
so the three um, things that she recommends for your yin practice are to come into a pose for an appropriate depth. So, um, and then to once you get there, resolve to remain still and then hold the pose for, you know, a certain set of time. Um, there is something called the Goldilocks position and it's basically finding the edge of your practice. I've heard it said that way, like um, with each posture, you really want to um, not do too little and not do too much. So just like Goldilocks, she didn't like the porridge that was too hot. She didn't like the porridge that was too cold. She liked the porridge that was just right. That's how that story goes. So make sure that you are moving to your edge where you don't feel pain. You certainly don't want to feel pain in any posture, but you also don't want to be too easy on yourself. You know, you want to love yourself in that way by really listening to the body and finding the edge of your practice. And um, then from there, resolving to be still. Um, when the body is still, it's like a great mountain that's unaffected by storms or swirling winds about it. Clouds can come in, clouds can, you know, clouds of thought, that is, can come into the mind and then they can just pass on by. Um, the muscles are inactive because, you know, every time we move, we engage our muscles. So the muscles naturally want to take any stretch in the body that they can. And one of their jobs is to protect their joints. So only if we keep the muscles quiet can we allow the effect of a deep stretch to sink into the joints. Um, stillness of the body leads to quieting the breath. We don't require as much um, breath. So we're quieting the breath here. You wouldn't use ujjayi breath. You would use gentle breath. Although for some of my students, especially if you're new to yin or new to yoga, this can be really intense and you have to breathe through it. Um, so how long it depends on each of the postures and, you know, just like with all yoga, you want to set an intention. Um, so I'm going to allow you to come to my class tonight and I'll record it for you guys. It's by no means perfect, but it's what I do. And I'm going to let you go now. My kids are awake. Right, <laughs> Namaste. Guys.